these three retro game consoles share one problem. The wired gamepads can't reach the seat unless the console is dragged halfway across the floor. Can this ESP32 module adapt old game systems to use modern wireless controllers? This project is sponsored by PCBWay. The first step is to get the wireless game controller talking to an ESP32. I've experimented with BluePad32 in a previous video, so I'm going to use that here as well. BluePad32 supports several modern game controllers, and I'm going to use a PS4 controller. The way this works is you set up a demo project by following various online examples for BluePad32, then you can pair the PS4 controller with the ESP32 by holding the PS and Share buttons. Now that the ESP32 can detect which buttons are being pressed, we need a way to control the retro consoles. These old gamepads used basic digital logic circuits, so when a button is being pressed, a logic low is presented to the input of the circuit. When nothing is pressed, the input sees a logic high. Instead of pressing buttons, we can use the ESP32 to send a logic low or high to these digital circuits. I recently made an ESP32 dev board where I included a header on one edge, giving access to some digital pins, including an SPI interface. Then I made plug-in boards with PCBWay, where I replicated the digital logic circuits from these retro gamepads. Then instead of having buttons on these gamepad circuits, each board has a GPIO expander connecting with SPI pins to these headers, and I can plug in a specific board, so now the ESP32 can receive Bluetooth button press information, communicate the data over SPI to this board, or if this one's plugged in, and it will electrically press buttons on the digital logic circuits that are the same as the ones in these controllers. Then I made some custom cables to plug into this output header, and this will go to the input of the game console. So I went on AliExpress and I bought Nintendo and Super Nintendo style cables with bare wires, and I put them on these headers, looking at online pinout diagrams to wire it up to these boards. And ultimately, now PS4 button presses get translated into signals that the game consoles can read. In the case of TurboGrafx-16, they just use a standard 8-pin DIN cable, so I bought some of those connectors and made my own custom cable as well. This whole project is a work in progress. This is more of a concept evaluation, but I will put all the design files on GitHub. Here's an example of the schematic for the one board that controls both NES or SNES. Here's the 20-pin header that plugs into the ESP control board. SPI signals basically go to this GPIO expander chip right there. So this decodes which buttons on the PS4 controller were pressed, and then it sends logic high or low to this logic circuit with a CD4021 shift register. There's two of them cascaded, so regular NES just uses one. SNES has extra buttons, so it has a second shift register, but they use the same 5 volts and serial data interface, so this one board can control both. And the TurboGrafx-16 board is similar. We have our 20-pin header, a GPIO expander, so the ESP32 tells the expander what PS4 buttons were pressed, and it will send logic high or low to the same circuit that's in a TurboGrafx-16 gamepad. So when we plug this cable into TurboGrafx-16, it can read all the buttons. The cable going into the Nintendo Controller 1 jack is going now to this ESP32 board. So if I hold the PlayStation and Share button until this light on the controller blinks, now it's going to pair and turn blue, which it has now. So I'll turn on the NES. This is going to be hard to do, so if I hit Start, I can hit Select, and it will change between one and two players, so I'll hit Start. So up, down, left, 
right, B, A, and start is pause. So, it seems to be working. Now the cable on the Super Nintendo controller port is going to this board. So one player start. So up, down, left, right. And the buttons. So it's hard to play on this angle. The controller cable from the Turbo Graphics is going now to this board. So I have the run button assigned to the triangle. So up, down, left, right, one kind of firing, another kind of firing. And this seems to be working fine. Pause is the run button again. So everything's working fine on three consoles. This is one way to solve the problem of too many short cables on retro game systems, and this approach can easily be adapted to work with other systems as well.